Massey here. How you doing? So today what we're going to talk about is everything Van Halen. Um, I got some requests via social media to put something like this all in one place. Uh, I'm really fired up to do this. Anybody who knows me knows that this is pretty much right uh, in my wheelhouse. So uh, let's just break down what gear I have. Obviously you can see this bad boy here. I'm uh, really lucky to have this in my arsenal. I've uh, been associated with this company and endorsed by them for a while and I could not be more proud. I have an MXR carbon copy delay in the loop. I'm going to use a little bit of the Sweet Phase 90 here as we go through our licks. And we're going to break down some fret tapping and some tap harmonics and things like that, but just the stuff that really got me going when I was younger. So the first thing that we're going to do is based out of a pentatonic type format. It's going to be E minor pentatonic. And we're going to use some of the second form of it. But this is a lick that helped me get going with the fret tapping and change it up a little bit. Uh, from Live Without a Net, I think somewhere in the, in that concert, maybe the Summer Nights solo, because it's a bit extended. But uh, we're going to take our, take our basic triplet, and we're going to do it on two strings. We're going to start on the second string, I'm tapping on 17, and of course my uh, left hand is going 12 and 15, so I have one, two, three, and I'm going to go to the high E string and do that. So I've got... Really, really cool sounding. If I click on the old uh, special pedal here, I get this sound. Really, really classic, uh, you know, sounds of uh, Van Halen, and I love it. I love that stuff. So uh, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to take that, and then we're going to incorporate this in it, where we tap on the high E string. I'm tapping 17. And I'm going to pull off all the way down. I'm going to tap this, I'm going to pull to 15, pull to 14, pull to 12. Maybe I'll double tap it. And it's to say, you know, when we go through this stuff, if uh, this is unfamiliar to you, uh, obviously take it slow. Some muting going on here when the low strings with my right hand to make sure I don't have any excess noise. But if I throw that one in with the previous one, where I have... It's kind of cool. So let me hit the pedal. So a little bit of the bending thing at the end there, but the slide is a totally cool effect. The tricky part about that is you're going to think of it as a regular triplet, but you got to come off the string enough to where you get a, a bit of the pull off there. So you can have... Uh, enough motion there to uh, make that one go into 15, your B to your D, nice and loud. So we have... So, so far... or something like that to get out of it. But I think that's really cool. That's kind of classic. Again, if we put that together. Love that stuff, you know, and we're just getting started really with this so we can go on for days. But uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these notes, basically, and we're going to tap down them in single order here. We're going to go... So that's going to be 14, 12, 11, 9, 7, and 5. We are not going to talk about theory. We're just going to talk about uh, coolness today. So uh, moving down, I'm tapping on 16. I can go up a little bit if I want. You know, any effect like that to really get me there. Ultimately, what I'm going to do is I'm shooting for this classic pick. That's the other one that I'm going for. So what this is, is all based off of tapping on 12. So I'm pulling to an open string, 7, 5 to an open string, going back up to the 5 and back to 7. So when I go to the next string, I hit that one first, so that way it'll help me transfer.
Bravo. That's kind of another thing that we could do to get out of that. So if I add the pedal into the mix and I put this uh, E minor pentatonic at the top of it and I work my way down, it's going to sound. <laughs> fun. I mean, that's definitely, you know, Van Halen and, and it's a really good effect. Um, to bring the tremolo bar into the mix, right, let's say we're, you know, we're going to rock some arena horsey noises. <laughs> Basically, the best way to go for this is you're hitting a pinch harmonic, I'm bending in on the third string, and I'm raking into the pinch, actually, so I get this. <laughs> get that motion if I grab my bar like this um, and I you know you want to make sure you grab it like this you don't want to you know monkey it like somebody uh, you know grabbing their silverware and not having the proper etiquette when they're eating <laughs> you want to grab it like this and kind of push and work your way down <laughs> That is, you know, of course, how we get some of those classic, uh, more horse type noises. You could do that anywhere on the third string where you're essentially going to have to bend that thing up a whole step as you rake into the pinch. And then you'll grab the bar this way and execute it as such. You can pop the G string with your index finger, dip the bar, and hit a harmonic on the way up. So if I go... That's a really cool effect. Uh, Dime would do that by reversing the bar. He'd do it really, really fast, and he could actually play a scale as he went through it, so that was pretty gnarly uh, as he did his harmonics. But this is just, you know, he took it and being inspired by this. All a little bit different. On the way up, I will admit, you can see I kind of clamp like this on the high and the low to make any uh, excess string noise. Play. But, you know, you can do those into one of the horse noises, and, and that's pretty sweet to do. Um, we love all of that stuff, so if we put that together, let me see if I'm lucky here and see if I can get it to work. Something like that. Uh, so, you know, the idea is just really kind of the same. You can't really go wrong with it. It's just having fun and just trying to sound, uh, you know, as much as we can like him. Our fingers are not his, so it's not really going to work, but we can do it just because it's cool rock guitar. So within that, now we have some tap harmonics that I want to talk about. Now, you know, over the years in the live solo... kinds of things and you know you're tapping on the wire to make the harmonic happen. If I pick one spot here. Or several. And what you're doing, I always tell people just pretend like you're tapping something that you know is gonna burn you, that it's really, really hot. So you kinda like pull your hand away. If you tap too hard, you're not really gonna get the effect and the note will just kind of be a muffled uh, dead note. And on the fifth string I'm really thinking of the dots, you know, and if I get anywhere in between it, it's cool. You know, that was a little bit of 13 and I got 16 in there. But if I shift it around, you kind of get this cool thing that he would do sometimes in his live solo. And you can do this as well on the third string. Now that's bending it up and letting it go down as we tap it, and that's specifically doing 12, 14, and 19. 12, 14, 19. And that's really, really fun to do too. So, uh, you know, you could put all these together and you can kind of see where we're headed with this. These are just some of the more classic things that are good to do that um, I think it's kind of fun to put all in one place. Another thing so. that I think would be cool to put into the mix here is this piano type technique that he would do over the top of the neck that looks just like this.
kind of silly and ridiculous, but it's really, really cool. And all I'm going to do there is I'm going to stay focused. The right hand's going to be on the B string and the D string. And over the top, I'm going to get the G string and the A string as I move up chromatically. When I get up to the top here and I'm on 17 and 19, I'm going to bring out my middle finger to get to 20 on the B string and go back. So you got this kind of effect where we're going. And it's noisy and I'm super distorted, so it's cool. You know, we're just going to go for it. And I'm a bur uh, firm believer in speaking clearly and saying that if you're going to screw it up, screw it up with the biggest amount of confidence because then people will buy it and that's awesome. So uh, let's go for broke here. Let's see what happens. Alright everybody, thank you so much. I appreciate you watching my videos as always. This is a really cool one for me to do. A little bit different. All fun uh, licks and stylistic things. And uh, my favorite guitar player. Or of my favorite guitar player I should say. So thank you so much and I'll see you next time.